Good morning, good morning, good morning. I pray you all had a great weekend. Pray you received a sweet sleep, woke up with bells and whistles on, ready to take on this new day, a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. But it is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Give God some praise wherever you are because he is good like that. He is the Messiah. He is the Redeemer. He is our Savior. Glory to God. He's whatever we need him to be whenever we need him to be it. And he deserves our praise. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Gathering of Hearts. I am Regina Banks, your GPS, the wholeness, a.k.a. I am the heart gatherer. And this morning, your daily dosage is a continuation of what we we had been talk have been talking about um last week and that is take your life back we're on part five today take your life back and so we got started in this series because sometimes we can be so involved in doing everything with other people and not tending to our own lives and so we realized the scripture tells us that the devil comes to steal kill and destroy but I, meaning Jesus, come that you might have life and have life more abundantly. And when we look at that scripture and apply it to our lives, are we actually experiencing the life more abundantly? And in most cases, we are not because we are involved, too involved in other people's lives. Not that that's always a bad thing. You know, sometimes we buy into somebody else's vision. You know, we're helping somebody else. And again, that's not a bad thing. However, if you're more involved in their life instead of your own, you've given your life up and you're not living the life that God called you to live. And so now you've got to take your life back so that you can experience the blessings and the promises of God for your life. Amen. And so we started talking about steps to take your life back. We started out saying, number one, give yourself permission to let go of the old because sometimes we live in the old too much and we won't get over into the new. We're just living in the past and remember remembering this and remembering that and not making room for God to give us the new. Number two, set goals and achieve them. Aim for progress, not perfection. Just make sure you are moving forward and not being stagnated. Don't be so hard on yourself. You know, no self-condemnation. Give yourself kudos when you make a change. Even if it's the smallest of change, acknowledge it and celebrate yourself. Number three, live proactively instead of reactively. Get organized and stay organized. And so we need to make the necessary changes in our lives, the important documents that need to be updated. Make sure that we are proactive and not reactive. When we're reactive, that means normally that you're under stress and pressure. But if you're proactive, when something happens, pull that document out and then get organized and stay organized. No more clutter in our lives. Let's free our minds of clutter. Let's free our homes of clutter. Let's free our thoughts of clutter and get things in order. And then um, we went to number four, be disciplined with self-care. And I talked about setting boundaries for yourself and then adhering to those boundaries, making sure others are adhering to those boundaries, understanding that no means no, that, you know, I can't do it right now. And that you do not have to explain why you're saying no. If you want to, you can, but you don't have to. And so moving on today, with number five, think more about your decisions. You know, sometimes we make decisions too hastily. You know, we allow pressure to do that. We allow stress to do that. But we need to think more about our decisions before we make those decisions. Luke 14, 28 says, For which of you intending to build a tower, sit if not down first and count the cost, whether he has sufficient 
um, to finish it. And so we've got to make sure that when we are making decisions that we count the cost. You know, sometimes we can get so excited and we just move forward or, you know, God gives us something. And sometimes he doesn't say right now, he's just telling us like, this is what's coming down the pike. And we go and make a decision without counting the cost. See, we've got to count the cost. I want a new vehicle, but am I ready for the new car? note? Am I ready for the fees of maintenance once the warranty is over? Am I ready for the um, increase that the car insurance may be? You know, we want to count the cost. When we say that we want to co-sign for something, and I, I hope you don't do that, but if you find yourself in that position that you're thinking about co-signing for something, now, Am I able to actually make the payment if that person doesn't? You know, I know they promised me that they will never need me to pay it. You know, their credit just isn't good enough to get it, but they can afford it. And we know that happens. You know, it has happened to some of us growing up, you know, maxed out on credit cards, that type of thing. But now we want to begin to count the cost because we're not 20 and 21 anymore, right? And so we want to count the cost. If I do this, what is the end game? You know, how long will I have to do this? Um, what else will it affect in my life? Who else will it affect in my life? And so we want to begin to make decisions and think more about our decisions, not just make a emotional decision. You know, you think that you are making a temporary decision, not understanding that it's going to have a permanent effect. And so we want to count the cost before we make any decisions. Most importantly, we want to talk to God before we make any decisions. Is this a part of my divine destiny or am I operating in my emotions? Because we can do that. We tend to do that sometimes. We get excited about something and we think that God is saying yes. God could be saying not now. God could be saying no, but we want it so bad that we don't hear God. We don't hear the Holy Spirit. And so let's begin now to actually think about the decisions that we're making. Remember, there is no rush to do anything anything in God, right? You know, we want to take our time. We want to count the cost. We want to talk to God. And sometimes you might not hear God right away. And so if that's a time when you don't hear God right away, give God time to speak. Again, do not sign your name or something before you have taken it to God, heard his response, Count the cost before you make any decisions in your life. Number six, don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, sometimes we get at a certain age and pride will keep us from asking for help because we feel like people may feel like you should know that already. Well, don't let pride keep you from progressing. If you need help, ask for help. James 423 mm, 4 says this, you have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you could be asking wrong or with the wrong intention if you're not getting the answer that you need. And so make sure that if you need help, that you're asking for help. There is nothing wrong with asking for help. We all all need assistance in some areas of our lives from time to time. So don't allow pride to overtake you where you don't want to ask for help. Remember, we are all blessed together. Remember, we need accountability partners. Remember, how can two walk together except for they agree? And so get in there and talk to somebody that is already doing what you want to do. Agree with them. Ask them to teach you how to do it. Don't be afraid to ask for help. That is a thing that has kept so many people stagnated because they are ashamed because it's something that they don't know. Understand this, that we all grew up differently. Some grew up with silver spoons in their mouths. Some didn't. Some grew up, you know, over across the railroad tracks, as the grandma would say, and some didn't. Some 
some have had opportunities that others may not have had. Some have been exposed to things that others may not have been exposed to. So let's not be a judgmental people that if someone has the courage to ask you for help, don't judge them, but answer their question, help them, you know, reach back and pull somebody up, show somebody something that they did not know. Remember, God exposed you to these things. He gave you the opportunity. So now you want to help others that we, you know, iron strength is iron. So help somebody along the way, expose somebody to something that they have not been exposed to and, you know, sit down and teach them how to do it without making them feel incompetent. And so let's now don't be afraid to ask for help. That's right. Heartbeat rainy show kindness to others. When someone you, you know, sometimes we can tell by facial expressions, you know, they're not clear on this. So don't make them feel, you know, incompetent. Just grab them by the hand and help them out. Um, number seven, and I don't, I'm probably not going to finish number seven, but we'll pick it up tomorrow. Number seven, take better care of your health. And here's something that sometimes we don't do. You know, we just keep moving right along, you know, going from day to day, helping the kids, helping the grandkids, helping the spouse, helping our friends, just moving along. But we've got to learn how to take better care of our health. And so the first thing you notice that when I start each and every day, I say, I pray that you all received sweet sleep, that you allowed your body to get the rest, that you received the sweet sleep that our gracious God gives us each and every day. And I can remember one time that I was just busy, you know, just doing stuff, just ministry, personal, just having a good time with friends and just enjoying my life. And I was so tired and I had gone to bed and I woke up and I still felt tired. Have you ever done that? And so I went to God and I was like, God, you said you promised your beloved sweet sleep. Well, I didn't get the sweet sleep. I'm tossing and turning and I woke up tired. And this is what he said to me. He said, I gave you sweet sleep, but you didn't take it. You chose to be concerned about the things of tomorrow and you chose to keep thinking about things that you needed to do and how you were going to get this done. He said, that's my job. I told you, cast your cares upon me. So I gave you the sweet sleep, but you didn't receive it. And ever since that day, I have made it my business to receive sweet sleep every night. And so we've got to take better care of our bodies. I'm running out of time. So we're going to get started right back here tomorrow. Listen, that's the daily dosage for today. Take your life back part five. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube, YouTube channel already, please do so because there you can find all of your dosages in one place. Follow me on social media platforms. God wants me whole. Visit the website. God wants me whole.org. You know how we do this thing. Come on, let's say it together. Say, God wants me whole, and I am. Again, I am Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka I am the heart gatherer. I love you guys a bunch. Go out there, have a speck while amazing day. Look out for falling blessings because they are falling all around you. And I'll see you right back here tomorrow morning as we continue on in. Take your life back, and we'll pick it up at number seven. Take better care of your health. I love you guys.